Hello, I'm Org, and this is a World of Warplanes video where I'm showing you the DO 17 Z7, the new tier 3 German heavy fighter that you can receive for completing 30 of the daily missions. Uh, I see from in game that lots of people have already got theirs, but presumably there are still a few people getting the last few missions done. So I thought it'd be good to put up a video just to show you kind of what you'd be getting. So anyway, this is it. Dornier 17Z7. It's kind of a heavy fighter variant of the Dornier 17Z bomber. I was actually surprised by how small it is in game. I thought they must have scaled it down because it doesn't look that big for a bomber. But I actually went out and checked and this actually wasn't that big an aircraft. Like the Focke 57 is considerably bigger than this in terms of wingspan and length. So I was actually a bit surprised by that, but... Anyway, this one was actually my second game in this aircraft. The one I'm going to show you after this was my first game. I decided to put them out of order because it gives me time to talk about things. And you can see I kind of screwed up at the start here and I managed to get the enemy Focke 57 up above me. And you can see it's coming for me. So I turn... I know the Focke 57, it's hard to aim with that aircraft so I just plan to dodge because I know statistically my aircraft is faster and more maneuverable than the Focke 57 so I was hoping essentially just dodging that attack would give me enough time to essentially get enough of a lead that my teammates could help me with the Focke 57 so I kill one XP-31 but the enemy team kills our team's XP-31 which leaves me and this Bulldog if you're paying attention earlier you saw that our Bulldog was saying stay over our enemy, our friendly AA what you might not have realised was that he meant to do that down at about 50 metres altitude. So when I realised that, I basically decided I'm just going to run and hopefully they'll, or that bulldog will distract the enemy long enough that I'll be able to get some altitude. And luckily the XP-31 goes after the bulldog, but I've still got this Focke 57 on my tail. So again, I'm going to dodge, because it's still got the energy advantage thanks to its higher altitude at the start. And, well, our Bulldog actually managed to take out the XP-31, which I was actually really surprised at the time. And I'm coming around behind the Focke 57. But the Bulldog goes head on with it. So now it's just me and my almost crippled aircraft alone against the Focke 57. And, well, what I've kind of learnt from this game is that... The Dornier 17, it doesn't retain energy very well. Yeah, basically that's it. It's like I went into a massive dive and this aircraft technically has better dive speed than the Focke 57. But I didn't gain a lot of separation, especially when I pulled out of that dive to shoot at the XP-31. I lost a lot of speed and the Focke 57 was able to catch up. Um, likewise, again, like I said, I've got a higher maximum speed. But I wasn't able to gain energy quickly enough to actually close the distance on this Focke 57 until it starts climbing to come back at me which you can see it's doing right now and again I decide to evade the shots rather than go head on with it but fortunately for me it stalls and of course it puts its nose straight back up in the air again and stalls again but I don't realise that so I do a kind of stupid turn around it and go straight in front of it really lucky it didn't kill me then but now I finally managed to get around behind it and can put my guns to use and you can see it's got really good firepower, especially at close range. 2017's got one 20mm cannon and three 7 point something millimeter machine guns. Technically the Focke 57's got better firepower, but I'd probably rate the 2017Z over it. But you see, I fall foul of the Focke 57's tail gunner. So that was an interesting game. It kind of showed the limitations of this aircraft. Like I say, it's... I think the main issue that I have with it is it's got very poor power to weight ratio. Well, actually no, it doesn't have very poor power to weight ratio, it's got a lesser power to weight ratio than the Focke 57 in that they both have two 1000 horsepower engines but the Dornier 17 is about half a ton heavier and just seems to be in a less aerodynamic airframe as well so you lose speed quickly and you can't really gain it back as quickly with the lower power to weight ratio. In these first two games I was playing it 
quite vertical. You can see me here, I'm climbing up nice and high to try and get an altitude advantage over the enemy Dornier 17Z. Whereas I've actually found that it's best to use this kind of more conservatively and more horizontally as you go in, you don't dive to escape from enemies because you've got good dive speed, but you don't really climb because you lose too much energy. You don't turn because you lose too much energy unless you're in a really safe situation. But you see here, I've managed to get myself up nice and high. I decided to dive down the Focke Wolf 159, but I see the Dornier 17 z and that's really got to be my top priority. And we go head on, and it's, well, not really, it breaks off, but I go head on. And I'm hoping I can get around behind it and above it, so I should be in an advantageous position here. Don't know why I started shooting so early, but I did. But I just can't quite able to get my guns on target there. And this Focke Wolf 159's on my tail, but I'm breaking off in a straight line and slowly gaining separation. And I don't think I actually noticed the Dornier 17 climbing up to me, so instead I turned back when I probably shouldn't have. And I kind of realised, seeing how quickly my health dropping down, I'm in a bit of trouble, so I'm just diving down towards my teammates, hoping to drag essentially the two remaining enemy aircraft underneath my team. And my team's definitely engaging them. But you can see, look at my speed dropping. Well, it's going to drop now because I'm going straight up. But even in that more gentle climb, my speed was dropping to nothing. And I can't even come close to regaining the altitude that I lost in that dive. So I've lost a lot of energy at some point. Most likely in the turns at the bottom, obviously, in that near vertical climb, which is kind of stupid. But at this point, I actually thought the game was pretty well won. It's 4 on 2. It was 5 on 2 when I entered that dive. Put a few shots into that Focke Wolf 159, but on the verge of stalling, so it's very hard to aim. And now it's 3 on 2. And now it's 2 on 2. And I am low and slow, so this isn't looking good. And I'm basically stalling. I'm hoping to put some shots in the Focke Wolf 159 here. And one thing I haven't mentioned that's kind of good about this aircraft is that there's also a tail gunner underneath it. Which, for some reason, it doesn't seem to be on the stats, but it does shoot at the aircraft below it. Well, anyway, I get focused down by both of them and I die pretty quickly. And, well, this game goes on for a lot longer. The F-11C here managed to kill the Focke Wolf 159. But then... Both of the teams, or both the remaining aircraft, kind of break contact with each other. And that's kind of it. I mean, they end up finding each other eventually. But first they just kind of hide from each other, even though it's kind of stupid. They both should be trying to kill the other in this situation, I reckon. The Dornier 17 looks like it's going to try it. But after this pass, it changes its mind and just flies around. But anyway, my thoughts on the Dornier 17 Z7. Like, I mean, the obvious comparison with it, if you couldn't tell, is with the Focke Wolf 57. And on paper, I'd rate the Dornier 17 Z better, just because, as I said, on paper it's got better airspeed and better maneuverability. And while the better maneuverability, I'm going to say, is definitely true, based on, well, you saw me outturn the Focke Wolf 57 in the first game, and my other experience has been, yeah, this Dornier can turn and roll better than the Focke Wolf 57. But I feel that the airspeed stats are kind of misleading. Since with the poor power to weight ratio of this aircraft, it loses energy quickly in climbs. So I've kind of been learning to play it a bit more as a more horizontal energy fighter. It looks like the ships are trying to shoot down the F-11 there. Anyway. So I play it horizontally, go and make an attack, once you're kind of safe, you can turn around, but you know you're going to lose a lot of speed in that turning around, so I'm not quite sure what's going to happen if you keep having to do that. You know, you know, if you don't manage to kill the enemy team quickly, you'll probably end up on very low speed. But anyway. And just, you know, one, one good speed characteristic of this is the dive speed, which from memory is about 620 kilometers an hour. And because of this weight of this aircraft, you will actually get up to kind of 500 to 600 kilometers an hour 
relatively quickly in a dive, so you can dive to escape from enemies. The problem then is that if you are low to the ground, as you saw me in this game, well, you can't really climb up to engage the enemy again at any rate, and if you try and regain your previous altitude once you've lost, you know, you've gained separation, you won't be able to have reached your previous en energy, uh, previous altitude, thanks to the energy you've lost through drag on the airframe and the climb and whatnot. But overall, I actually kind of like this aircraft. I've done all right in it. I've got, managed to get, well, except for these first two games, I've managed to get like a kill or two every game and a couple of assists here and there. But it's just a slightly different variation on the German theme. And I'm kind of. I was actually a little bit disappointed to see this was coming out as a gift aircraft because I was hoping it would be there kind of as the start of a Dornier heavy fighter line going through the 17Z7, then the 215, couple of variants of the 217, I think is what I'm thinking of, and then ending up in the Dornier 2335, which was the push pull fighter thing. And then, of course, they had a rocket power variant of that and a jet engine power variant of that, which I was hoping would kind of be 9 and 10. And I'm still kind of hoping that's going to happen, and they're going to bring up the Dornier 17Z10 as kind of the tier 4 Dornier heavy fighter. But anyway, this replay's over, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. I should point out that in about one second, that aircraft's going to get destroyed by the tail gunner. No, it's not. Why did it stop there? Okay, anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time.